Hi, Troy. Hi, Dave. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. All right. So you're from Middlebury, Vermont. Now, uh, how how long were you in Middlebury? Um, I was actually just born in Middlebury, okay, but at the time there. my family was living in Virgins. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Which is uh, not too far. Yes. My dad was a teacher um, at Virgins mm-hmm. uh, High School for a, a few years. And Vermont is definitely, I have, having lived and, and worked in Vermont, I, I can tell you Vermont is a definitely a very unique state. Um, and I think that, oh, yeah. that that the music tastes in Vermont are very unique as well. Do you channel some of that into your music? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Vermont has a special place in my heart um, just because it's such a beautiful, peaceful state. It was a really awesome place to grow up. Mm-hmm. Um, a very, you know, it was a very sim- simple place to grow up, and it allowed a lot of creativity to breathe. But my musical taste, I think, comes down to the music that I was introduced to as a kid, and that was kind of my mom and my dad's musical taste, mm-hmm. and um, a lot of a lot of singer songwriters from the '60s and '70s, and, right. and so that was, um, and it was easy to to not be distracted from that because we didn't have cable TV yeah. growing up. Um, I mean, we had a TV; we'd watch movies on the weekends, but we didn't have like um, we weren't overloaded with um, with all kinds of stuff. We we kind of were in our own world and listening to what was in front of us and appreciating it. Now, having lived kind of a sheltered life in Vermont, how much about Gwen Stefani did you know prior to this show? <laughs> well, um, it's funny because although we were in Vermont and it wasn't, you know, we still knew who Gwen Stefani was. My sister, my older sister, Tyler, uh, the first CD that she ever bought was Tragic Kingdom. Uh, no doubt. I used to steal that thing from her <laughs> and absolutely wear it out. I, I fell in love with it. I loved No Doubt. I loved Gwen Stefani and you know, kind of been quietly following Gwen Stefani's career over the years because she was she was like the first rock star that I was introduced to mm-hmm. um, that was of my generation. And, um, you know, when I had this weird opportunity to come audition for The Voice and I found out that she was a coach, I knew that if she turned around for me, I'd have to pick her. Now, when, when she's coaching you and talking to you, mentoring you, how long did it take to get past the point of, oh my God, it's Gwen Stefani, and then focus on what it is you're trying to do without thinking about that. Yeah, that's, I, that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't I haven't got past that yet. <laughs> but it is, you know, there are times where I think, what the, am I really just standing next to Gwen right now? What, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> does, does her coaching style fit what you do? She, she gets my style. She, I think she understands why I sing the way that I sing. I'm kind of an emotional singer, and, and I try to put everything into it. I think that she trusts my instincts, and that's something that's really um, important to me because she's allowing me to be myself. Awesome. Now, you realize if you win this thing, you'll be bigger than fish in Vermont. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know about that. You better uh, you better be careful who lets you hear that, who lets you hear, hear you say that. <laughs> well, we wish you the best of luck, to, uh, Troy, in the uh, competition and in the future in your music. Hey, thank you so much, and thanks for taking the time to talk to me today.